I don't want to be sacrificed on the altar of vegan altruism to the god PETA. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Hey guys, so I had filmed this video yesterday and was going to edit it today and realized that it was complete rubbish. <laughs> I didn't like the way that it turned out, so I'm doing it again. And this time I made sure that I had good notes and I'm going to be going off of those notes for this video because this is a topic that means a lot to me personally. It's really impacted my life in a major way and I want to make sure that I really nail the points that I'm trying to make and make them as clear and understandable as possible. If it's your first time here, thanks for showing up. You should go ahead and subscribe and maybe even give this video a like. That'd be cool. There's also the little bell icon thing. I don't know. People in videos always say you should hit the bell icon thing so you'll get notifications when I post. Do it. Don't do it. I, yeah, I've never done that before, honestly, myself. So I feel like it'd be kind of hypocritical for me to demand that you do that. But if it's something that makes you feel warm and fuzzy, go for it. <laughs> So today we are going to be talking about veganism. Hot topic. More importantly, why I myself will never refer to myself as vegan, despite the fact that I follow a 99% plant-based diet and have been for the last couple of years or so. Veganism in general is awesome. It's a really, really great concept because it's about taking care of yourself and the planet and caring about the creatures that you share this planet with. And it's really, really just good and it's wholesome. And that's not the problem here. The issue that I have is just the irregularities that I have been seeing in like the vegan culture since I kind of started paying attention to what's going on with all of that. So especially with vegan content creators like on YouTube or just on social media in general, the stuff that they say, the, the claims that they make, it can just get a little crazy and kind of weird. It's a lifestyle, not a religion, and people don't seem to get that. They get super obsessive and militant about it, and I think it ruins the party for everyone. People establish themselves as the voice of vegan and just kind of go crazy, make claims that they can't substantiate, follow pseudoscience and support pseudoscience again that they can't substantiate. They can be really unkind, honestly, and hypocritical, like I said, and just not, not wholesome and kind of just toxic, to be honest. A lot of times um, what you'll see happen, and it's been happening frequently within the past couple of years or so, people who were vegan and who had their entire platform and identity built around the concept of being vegan had issues come up in their health that forced them to reevaluate what they were doing. They were no longer able to follow the vegan diet that they were following, which oftentimes, to be perfectly honest, wasn't very good. And so they'll come out and say, hey, I'm not vegan anymore, or I'm reevaluating, or whatever the case. And all of their followers and all the other vegans in their community will like turn on them and just tear them apart. It's terrifying, honestly, and weird and creepy, and I don't want to be associated with it. And that is, I feel like, the quintessential vegan. When people hear the word vegan or veganism, they think of crazy people tearing each other apart and I just I feel like you're missing the forest for the trees when you do that not into it another thing that really just kind of confuses me and just kind of makes me wonder is the vegan guilt and like the mental gymnastics that vegans will put themselves through so that they can believe something veganism tends to have this all or nothing ultimatum you're either following everything to a T or you're not, and if you're not doing every little thing, then you're not a vegan and you're of no use to the vegan community. Not all vegans are like that, of course, not that would be a sweeping generalization, but a lot of them are, and I think it, it ruins things and it turns a lot of people off, people who might potentially be interested in following a more plant-based diet, and it's kind of a shame. The term vegan is good for classification, of course, because there's a big difference, for example, between a food that's vegan and a food that's vegetarian, but 
whether or not someone is technically vegan or following a plant-based diet, the fact that there's such disparity there kind of just drives me crazy and I don't care that much about the term vegan or calling myself a vegan. I don't get a rush from it so I don't feel bad if I miss out on that party. Veganism gets held up as this golden standard for zero harm which kind of just seems very blind and that's what I mean about like mental gymnastics. Vegans will say well I'm not doing this or this or this. I'm not consuming these animal byproducts so I'm not hurting the animals or the planet in any way. And I feel like that's just really ignorant. Telling yourself that is being ignorant of life and of the way that the planet just works in general, of the way the food chain works. A perfect example of this is the whole honeybee thing. And what I mean by that is that vegans, hardcore, like dedicated vegans, don't consume honey or anything with beeswax in it or you know use any product that has any of that stuff in there because they have issues with the bee agriculture side of things with the way bees can be treated they don't want to support that and while i am very sure that there are instances where things are not done correctly and bees are mistreated. The flip side of that is that vegans have no problem consuming almonds and drinking almond milk, which is fine. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't drink almond milk or eat almonds. I love both. I would be lost without them. I, I consume both quite frequently. But the trees that those almonds are coming from are pollinated by bees, which are frequently brought in on trucks hundreds of miles to pollinate these trees because there aren't nat enough natural pollinators in the area. And I would bet good money that that goes for a lot of the other plants that vegans like to consume, that it make up a major staple of their diet. What I'm trying to say is, if you think that by not consuming honey, you're not harming a bee, well, you might not be because you're not consuming honey, but what about the bees that are pollinating all the other food that you eat? You really think that everything's fine and dandy there, no bees were harmed in the making of those almonds? Well, you'd like to hope not, and I think in most cases, generally not. Um, I don't know any beekeeper worth his salt that would purposefully harm the bees that are responsible for his livelihood. That doesn't make any sense. But we live on planet Earth and we take up space and sometimes you are going to, you know, you're going to make an impact on the environment that you're in. If you walk outside, you're gonna squish some bugs walking on the ground. Does that mean you're a terrible person? No, of course not. It just means you live on planet Earth and that's just the way it is. So I think, you know, there's sort of a will, like a willful blindness to the facts and the reality. And I think that that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I am not blind to the reality, so I don't see any point in pretending like a situation is the way it is when it is not. Make sense? The third thing about veganism that I just kind of don't support is that a lot of vegans are very anti-hunting. I don't really understand that, but again, I think it comes back to a lack of information, a lack of education, honestly, and knowledge of the facts. Hunting is extremely beneficial for the environment. It can be really, really awesome for boosting up and controlling an area that is kind of just struggling. Case in point would be wild hogs down in Texas or white-tailed deer across any number of Midwestern states or even lionfish in the Atlantic Ocean. These species don't have natural predators a lot of the times in the places that they're in. They can reproduce like crazy. They can cause hazards to people. They can tear up soil. They can ruin agriculture, just kill off tons of crops. In the case of lionfish, they can come in and destroy the ecosystem completely. They don't have natural predators and other than people. So if people don't come in and hunt these animals and kind of bring their numbers down, they will grow out of control and become a major problem. I think part of being a good human, part of being a good vegan, is being aware of the fact that we are stewards of the earth and that doesn't just mean trying to make as little impact as possible or being aware of what you're consuming. It also means maintaining and helping to create a balance where there needs to be one. Hunting is awesome. There's plenty of scientific literature on it if you wanna look it up. I'm not gonna include any here because that's not the kind of video that this is.
I think a lot of vegans tend to view hunting as this evil, terrible thing, and it just isn't. It just isn't. Um, I have a lot of respect for hunting when it's done properly and within the confines of the regulations and laws that are put in place. It really, really is beneficial for people and for animals. I ditched animal products for health reasons first, and then for ethical reasons for the planet, for the animals second. I have a real issue with animal agriculture as a whole, with the whole factory farming and the confusion and misconceptions around quote unquote free range and grass fed and all that stuff. Again, it just comes down to misinformation, but I don't want to support those industries. I don't want to be a part of that. I have real issues with it. For me, it comes down to a moral dilemma that I just couldn't work around. But that is not to say that I think that consuming animal products is always bad or that it's bad for you which is something that a lot of vegans like to conveniently ignore. They like to ignore a lot of the very real scientific literature in the medical community that says that there is nothing wrong with consuming meat within reason. I don't believe that meat is always murder. Again, going back to the whole hunting scenario, animals aren't going to regulate themselves. We have to be stewards of this earth. We have to make smart, intelligent decisions. We have to be educated and we do have to be compassionate, but not to the point of complete ignorant blindness to the truth. Besides all of those things that I take issue with, I wouldn't call myself vegan because I don't fit the vegan textbook definition. I don't always follow a vegan lifestyle. Some examples of this would be the raw honey that Stuart's mom sends me every once in a while. It's produced locally. I use it. To not use it would be wasteful and to be honest it's a really awesome product. It's supporting a local business. Some would say that they take an ethical or moral dilemma with that. I don't. The meat that is produced as a byproduct of hunting animals, I don't see an issue with consuming that, again, in a healthy manner, but I don't think that there's anything wrong with eating that meat. I have and I will continue to. I support hunting and I support people who hunt. I want to get into hunting myself at some point. I think that it's a really valuable life skill. And then also there are sometimes situations with family where it's not possible to be 100% vegan. My family, Stuart's family, does not follow a vegan lifestyle whatsoever. I think the concept's pretty foreign to them. My parents were vegetarian back before they had kids for like eight or ten years or something like that, but that's about the extent of it. They're healthy people, they lead a, lead a healthy lifestyle, they believe in eating good food, but they're not vegan. So there are situations where I go home and it's not possible to be 100% vegan. My mom might make a vegetable soup that has a ton of veggies in it, but maybe has a beef base. She took the time to cook a meal, which is not something that my mom does all the time anymore. I'm going to be appreciative of that and eat the food that she cooked. I think that loyalty to family and appreciation of the time and love and effort that goes into preparing a meal kind of outweighs the other side of it for me. That's just me personally. Not everybody is, feels that way and that's completely fine. I just want to do my best to reduce harm that is being done to animals and to make a positive impact on my body and on the earth. And as of right now, I can confidently say that I feel like I'm doing that. Some people might say that I am completely missing the point. I don't care. If you feel that way, feel free to tell me about it in the comments. I'll listen to what you have to say, but it by no means means that I agree with you or think that you are correct. You have an opinion, you're entitled to it, as am I. At the end of the day, I hope that we are all here trying to make the planet a better place, make ourselves a better place. If we can agree on that point, I think that that is the main thing. Thing, and the rest is all details, personal details that you've decided to embrace. I wouldn't call myself vegan and like I said before at the beginning about the whole toxicity of it all, I don't want to be sacrificed on the altar of vegan altruism to the god PETA because I say, oh I'm vegan and then someone takes a picture of me eating something that isn't vegan and then I get hung for it. It's just, it's ridiculous. 
no, no, I don't care. I wanted to make this video because this is the first time that I've been able to clearly and definitively outline all of my reasons for feeling the way that I do, for believing what I believe. Mainly, it's just really nice to be able to express my thoughts in a clear manner. Most people in casual conversation don't want to sit and listen to you go this in depth with something. So this is a way for me to get it kind of all off of my chest and out into the open. If somebody comes along, if you're watching this and you, uh, Res it resonates with you and that's awesome too and I'm glad that you're here. I do before I go want to give a couple honorable mentions to a couple other channels. The first one is Mike and the second one is Swayze from Unnatural Vegan. I'll put the links to their channels in the description of this video but I really appreciate their content because they back everything up they say with scientific data, studies, research, that kind of thing. When I was first starting to learn about veganism and how to eat a plant-based diet, I relied really, really heavily on Mike's channel and now I watch a ton of Swayze stuff. They're both great. Yeah, if this is something that you're interested in or if you just wanna learn more about how to be healthy and make good health, decision, good health decisions for your body, then I highly recommend both of them. So check them out. What else before I go? All my socials are down in the description of this video. I mean, social media accounts, not social security numbers. <laughs> so go and add me, follow me on there if you aren't. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I think that's it for now. I'm trying really hard to at least put out a video a week. I wish that I could narrow it down to like a specific day or something like that, but my work schedule will not let me. So I have to just be flexible. Thank you for being flexible with me. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon for the next topic. Thank you.